Is the West the problem of Africa or is Africa its own problem? The reason we are asking this is because, yes, it's a fact that the West has contributed greatly to the problem and current challenges faced in the African continent. But we can't also close our eyes to the fact that Africa is also guilty. Think about it. When the Europeans first set foot on the continent and the transatlantic slave trade began, records showed that a lot of African kings and traditional rulers were involved in the trade in exchange for mirrors and guns. The colonial period was no different. Of course, by this time, Europe had already taken over the continent, but the fact is they were able to do so because they had help from Africans who helped them enforce their rules and ideologies. What about the post-colonial period? The situation was even worse. African leaders and those in power gladly implemented and enforced the interests of the West in exchange for power and wealth, not regarding the state of the people. And today, the situation is the same. Recently, Captain Traore of Burkina Faso levied serious allegations against neighboring African countries, Ivory Coast and Benin, of collaborating with France to cause economic and security destabilization in Burkina Faso. But what does Traore mean by economic destabilization? Well, according to Traore, Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso are blocking goods en route to Burkina Faso at their ports. This is very serious because Burkina Faso is a landlocked nation meaning it is surrounded entirely by land and doesn't have direct access to the sea. So, imagine essential items including food and drugs coming from Ivory Coast and Benin, countries that are supposed to be neighbors. But these countries are stopping the goods from going to Burkina Faso. The first question is why? According to Traore, this blockade orchestrated by the government of Benin and Ivory Coast is part of a grand plan to collapse the Burkinabe economy. And guess what? The reason for this is that Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger quit the West African Regional Bloc, ECOWAS. Now, our second question is, how can nations that preach African unity purposely orchestrate the downfall of the economy of another fellow country? How can Africa ever be united? Can you see why we say that Africa might just be its own problem? Well, this is not all. Remember we said that Captain Traore levied serious allegations against neighboring African countries, Ivory Coast and Benin, of collaborating with France to cause economic and security destabilization in Burkina Faso. So what does he mean by security destabilization? You see, after Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger ended diplomatic relations with France and kicked out French forces from their countries, some sources revealed that France is planning to reduce its military presence in West and Central Africa to around 600 troops, in line with President Emmanuel Macron's plans to limit the French military footprint in the region. However, the recent speech given by President Traore of Burkina Faso says otherwise. During the press conference, President Traore gave a powerful speech that centered on his plans as leader of the country for the next five years, a new protectionist policy on mineral resources and damning revelations about neighboring Benin and Ivory Coast and how they are working together with France to destabilize Burkina Faso. Speaking in front of the Palais des Sports in Ouagadougou, President Traore accused the imperialist France of wanting to plunder and destabilize Burkina Faso, as well as other West African countries. He said France failed in its anti-terrorism efforts, and instead of leaving the country, it has turned to destabilization efforts in Burkina Faso. Specifically, he stated that he has evidence of destabilization orchestrated against Burkina Faso by France and supported by Benin and Ivory Coast. He said, we have nothing against the Ivorian people but we have something against whoever governs Ivory Coast. We say it and repeat it. In fact, there is an operational center in Abidjan to destabilize our country. Traore went further to express concerns over the policies of Benin and Ivory Coast leaders, specifically highlighting that there are two French bases in Benin targeting Burkina Faso. Nobody will come and tell us that in Benin, there are no French bases directed against us. We have the evidence at hand, said Traore. According to Traore, these two French bases are used to train terrorists in Benin, and they are designed to destabilize Burkina Faso. 
He further added that Burkina Faso has concrete proof of the existence of the French bases, including tracks laid and soldiers equipped. He also said that there are audio recordings of French agents in Benin collaborating with terrorist operations. We will show you physical evidence, he said. Now these allegations, if true, spell something, and that is, there might just be a plan underway to turn the citizens of Burkina Faso, who have thrown their support behind Traore, to turn against him. But what does Ivory Coast and Benin have to say regarding this issue? In a press release published on social media, the spokesperson of the Benin government promptly denied Captain Traore's accusations, which he defined as nauseating disinformation, which fuels the resentment of the populations and threatens the peaceful coexistence of the peoples. The spokesperson in turn underlined that the vast majority of thwarted attacks in Benin also concern attackers coming from neighboring Burkina Faso and Niger. However, one thing you should know is that President Traore is not the only one who has accused the presidency of the Republic of Benin of hosting French bases located near the border with Niger. The authorities in Niger accused Benin of hosting French military bases close to its border. However, the president of Benin, President Talon, vehemently denied the presence of military bases hosting French forces close to the border with Niger. President Talon even went as far as inviting the government of Niger to visit Benin and prove that French military bases were indeed there. The government of Niger did not take up that offer, and it seemed as if it was mere allegations until a picture began circulating the internet which showed President Talon receiving a former French army general, Francois Lecointre. I'm sure some of you may be familiar with this name. It was this guy who made headlines in April this year when he said that he advocates for the recolonization of Africa. Shocking for those who didn't hear the news, but that's what he said in a live interview, and he wasn't even diplomatic about it. According to him, Europe must be capable of taking charge of its known destiny, and guess what? Africa and the Mediterranean is apparently the destiny of Europe. He went on to add that Europe must come back to recolonize the continent in 10 or 20 years for now. Then, to make it sympathetic, he said it is necessary because Africans are not capable of self-governance and the African masses are suffering under corrupt and incompetent leaders. So, for an African leader to still be in relation with this kind of person says so much about that African leader, and it proves the point we made that Africa is its own problem. How can any African leader who prides himself as a true Pan-African relate or enter into a deal with someone with this kind of mindset? Yet it's something that is very common. Now, the French military has also denied the accusations from Traore. In a recently released statement, the French military formally denied the existence of military bases in Benin. The statement said, The only permanent military personnel are the defense attaché and the cooperants seconded to the Europe and Foreign Affairs Ministry. It also added that France has only five bases in Africa, which are Chad, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Gabon, and Djibouti. Occasionally, Temporary and short-term operational training detachments are deployed to support the Beninese armed forces at their request. The question now is, who is correct and who is wrong? Well, President Traore says he has proof and evidence and even audio recordings of French soldiers collaborating with terrorists in Benin. And he has said that the evidence will be released in the coming days. So for him to publicly say that he has evidence, that means there is an element of truth in his speech. In addition to this, recall that in recent times, President Traore has spent heavily on the Burkinabe military, purchasing sophisticated armory and military equipment that was formerly impossible to acquire because France refused to allow them to get it. However, thanks to the fact that Burkina Faso ended the defense pact with France, which has been in existence since the country got independence and allowed France to dictate what should and should not be bought. Burkina Faso has been able to get sophisticated equipment and high-grade military weapons from Russia, Iran, Turkey, and North Korea. One of these pieces of equipment is unmanned UAVs or drones that can monitor jihadists inside Burkina Faso from the sky. The movement of these drones also means that it is capable of monitoring activities in neighboring countries such as Ivory Coast and Benin. So, 
For Captain Traore to say that he has evidence of these military bases in Ivory Coast and Niger, it means that he has seen something to that effect. So right now, we all have to wait for the evidence to be released. The interesting thing is that this is not the first time Captain Traore has accused Ivory Coast of hosting destabilizers. If you recall, the relationship between Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast has been tense in recent times. In one of his latest interviews with national television RTB, President Traor raised concerns about strained relations with neighboring countries, particularly Ivory Coast. He accused Cote d'Ivoire of sheltering elements opposing his regime and failing to address the terrorist threats spilling over the Ivorian border. During the broadcast on April 26, Captain Ibrahim Traore emphasized efforts to foster understanding with most neighboring countries, but singled out Cote d'Ivoire for alleged lack of cooperation. He stated, they must return to better sentiments. All the destabilizers of Burkina Faso are there. Ivorian officers spoke ill of Burkina. There is an issue that needs to be addressed honestly without deceit. He also added, at some point, we have to stop the hypocrisy and tell the truth. There's a problem with the authorities of this country. Now, Burkina Faso is not the only country that has accused France of destabilization. Early this year, in January, to be specific, the Prime Minister of Mali said something similar. He said that in the same way, the UN Security Council sowed disorder in Libya by assassinating Muammar. It's the same way France sowed chaos in Mali. In his own words, the Prime Minister said that, so you create chaos, you arm people, you tell them to go and divide Mali. The separatists clearly said that it was France that was behind the separatist movements of 2011 from Libya. The leaders of the movement said France had instigated them to invade northern Mali and divide it and create an independent state. We are not the ones saying that. It is the leaders of this movement who say so and are supported by French politicians. Interestingly, this was not the first time Mali was raising the issue of France's subversive efforts in the country. In 2022, the foreign minister of Mali, Abdoulaye Diop, wrote a letter to the United Nations accusing France of supporting jihadists and violating Mali's airspace. According to Minister Diop, he has several elements proving that illegal incursions into Malian airspace have been used by France to collect information for the benefit of terrorist groups and to drop them weapons and ammunition, the letter speaks of some 50 repetitive and frequent violations of Malian airspace by French forces since the start of 2022. Drones, helicopters, or fighter planes had flown over Mali without authorization from Bamako. Diop further stated that France carried out spying activities, including packages dropped by the French army on the 8th of August. This was proved after clandestine and uncoordinated overflight operations by France were conducted after an attack on Tessit camp, which claimed the lives of 42 Malian soldiers. Although Minister Diop called for an emergency meeting with the United Nations to address these claims, no such meeting was arranged and the issue died out. It is said that every rumor has an element of truth, and in this scenario, it is the same thing. It may seem wild to accuse France of such actions, but if you think about the history of France in Africa, you would understand that it is something that France can do as long as it is in their interest. Let's think about it together. What is the best way for a country to exploit another country that is blessed with abundant resources? If you think about it carefully, it's by offering help when there is chaos and insecurity. Imagine if Mali has been peaceful, with no violence and no Tuareg rebels. France would have no right to deploy its soldiers to Mali and set up a base. So they had to create a situation which would ensure that Mali asked for their help and they would swoop in as saviors to save the day. But their plan wasn't to completely eradicate the insecurity. The plan was to fight the jihadist and armed rebels a little, give them time to regroup and fight again and so the cycle continues. The only way things will change is for all African countries to unite and fight the insecurity together. Leaving it for only one country to deal with is the reason why the insecurity spread from Mali in 2013 to Burkina Faso and Niger. 
Every African country has to work together to completely cut off Western influence and put an end to the numerous challenges facing the continent. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments in the comments section below. Now, let's talk about the Sahel Alliance, which is the current symbol of African unity. The Alliance of the Sahel was formed in October 2023, but officially signed into being in July this year. The idea to form the bloc, also known as the Confederation of the AES, after the Niger coup and the regional bloc, ECOWAS, threatened to use force to make the military hand back power to the deposed president. In a rare form of solidarity, both the leaders of Mali and Burkina Faso pledged their support to the military authorities in Niger and vowed that there would be war in the region if Ikawas dared to militarily invade Niger. If we can all remember, this period was tense in West Africa because there was a threat of war in the air. However, Ikawas backed down and the threat of war abated. But the solidarity between the three nations evolved in mid-September when the leaders came together to sign a mutual defense pact called the Liptako Gorma Charter, named after the eponymous historical region, and established an alliance called the Alliance of the Sahel States. According to the Charter, its objective is to prevent, manage, and resolve any armed rebellion or threat to territorial integrity and sovereignty, privileging peaceful and diplomatic channels, and, if necessary, to use force to deal with situations that breach peace and stability. So this means that the Alliance of the Sahel State was not just formed to fight external threats, but also to combine the resources of these countries to fight against terrorism, which has plagued the Sahel region for years. The defense pact made sense because the three countries had a lot in common. First, they are all former colonies and have been subjected to France's imperialism and neo-colonial tendencies for decades. Secondly, they are all led by the military. And finally, they have been suffering from an intense insecurity problem. Now, a few weeks after the defense pact was signed, the leaders of the three countries decided to further evolve the alliance from a simple defense union to a true economic, monetary, and political union that would counter the Ikawa's bloc. So, in November of the same year, the finance ministers of the three states issued a joint statement recommending the creation of a committee of experts to study the issue of economic union and monetary union. Every true Pan-African waited for the actualization of the AES alliance, and their expectations were not dashed. In June of this year, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso revealed that they have finalized the plans to form the confederation. And then in July, the first AES summit was organized which officially burrowed the AES pact into existence. The AES Pact is a great example of what African unity should be, and it is paramount that all African countries aspire to join the bloc. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.